Uh, it's a pretty special day because of this young man and what I see in him. Uh, you know, I think he's a really, really special kid. And, you know, it starts with the person that he is. He's, he's got a humility about him that he wants to, he chose this program. I mean, he could go anywhere. And he chose this program uh, because he knows this will be one that develops him. And so he's coming in with a humility of he knows what's in front of him as far as the work that it entails to be a great player. And he wants to do it. And he loves the game. He likes to win. He wants, you know, he cares about all the right things. And, and that's why I see something special in him. And, and uh, you know, so he's got that unique ability of a mixture of size and skill which you know puts him in a um, a category that that's really special and and like I said unique um, but but it's so much about where he can be when when he when he gets in this program and through his hard work and through his hours and hours of spent in the gym and through you know our development plan uh, that that's gonna be you know that, that's going to change everything for him and that's why he chose to come here and that's why I have so much respect for the kid is 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 there's a maturity to him and a humbleness to him and a work ethic that I love and and that you match that with his uh, abilities that he's been given and um, like I said the sky's the limit where do you envision him and what do you position wise or what do you envision yeah, yeah that, that that's but he's he's a 610 guard so where where that puts him uh, you know in in the scheme of things but we you know we've always played with kind of four guards and and somewhat positionless and somewhat you know so it's just a matter of um you know i think the strength of our program is is we adjust to each guy individually to let them play to their strengths and so what, what i think we'll see with sada is the the, his strength will change the longer he's here and the, you know the more he develops and so we'll continue to grow and adjust with him and uh, you know so the person that we're getting you know in June when he comes here is going to be a lot different than the person that leaves here and, and that you know that's exciting for us and and I think exciting for him and his family. I think a lot of people see Kansas, Kentucky, you see all the offers he had, and yeah. fans and the rankings and all that, you expect him to come in and be the Mountain West Player of the Year next year. Right. I mean, how, how, what, are, what should the expectations be for him? Do you see him making an immediate impact next year? And what, how do you try to temper maybe fans' excitement? Yeah, it, it's hard to tell. And, and you know, like you, you look at Tyson, I, I had high expectations for him. I had high hopes for him. He didn't know how quickly he'd get to that. I mean, he became, came in and became that person that we thought he could be right away and was freshman of the year. And so it's hard, you know, until they get here and you get to work with them day to day and they get to play against competition at this level, which is different, and, and then it's hard, you, you can't even begin to guess. How do you, when it comes to a guy like Sada, obviously he's had injury histories in the past, so how do you kind of evaluate that? When I talked to him, I mean, he said that maybe started the season a little slow, but yeah. he's starting to feel really good again. Yeah, it's, you know, it, that, what, what he had was a, ser you know, ACL, and that takes a while to come back, and, and you know, that's our priority is, is building him for the long term, so that, you know, that's the most important thing, so, you know, when, when we look at the plans for the future, it's that, that, that's where it all starts, is the health and the, you know, the explosiveness that we got to get back for him and on all those things where he can stand up to a, the rigors of a college season and and be able to do it night in night out you were joking or he was joking around that uh he was a soccer player growing up and yeah his dad said once he got a certain height he's like i don't see very many six nine soccer players out there so i've kind of encouraged him to pick up basketball yeah. i mean I, I know that he's had an injury history and whatnot but like how how far is he from his like potential of what he could be? Is is there still a level of rawness to his game? I guess. Yeah, and and that's the that's the thing that um, that you can never tell. Like I said, like Tyson's a great example. I mean, I knew where he could start to go. I, you just don't know how quickly he can get there, and you just never know. Each each individual is different, and and so that's how we handle our player development. You know, it's it's personalized for each guy, and it will be for Sada and. Uh, but it gets you excited because, like I said, all those things I mentioned about him is his humbleness, his work ethic, his, his understanding of the long term, of where we want to go with this with him and, 
and with our program and and he he buys into all that which is you know at that age it's really really it's a it's a huge sign of intelligence that he sees where it can go not just the short term of hey i signed at so and so school you know he's not into that he's into the long term development and where this game can take him and and like I said in the release, the sky's the limit with a kid like him. What do you think impressed him the most in committing here and saying that this is the right fit for me? You know, I think there's a lot of things, the, the family atmosphere that we really have here and the, the, the development that we've done and, the, you know, the proof is in the pudding uh, with, with the development that we've done on a consistent basis with a lot of different guys. And, and I think they really dug into that and saw that. And, they know what we're gonna, that we're going to be committed to that. And that's a daily uh, endeavor here is the, the development of all our guys in, in everything. And, you know, I think he and his family saw that and looked into that pretty carefully. And, and I think it's one of those deals where people that know him, when he says he's going to Boise, they're like, that, that's a smart move because you'll come out of there a great player. And, and I, know, I know that that's where we're going to get Sada. Can we ask non-Sada questions? Well, it depends what they are. Uh, Marcus Shaver, we saw him put his name in the oh. portal or in the uh, draft. Yeah, all that stuff is a work in progress. I feel great about where we're going with this thing. We got, you know, we got a lot of uh, moving parts. And, and you know, the, when talking to other coaches throughout the country, it's just a new era. The moment the season ends, it's, it's your roster management and it's portal management and it's, I mean, it's just uh, – the, the whole landscape of college basketball has changed so dramatically in the last couple of years. And, you know, if, if our old mentors could see the, the new basketball world up close and personal, they'd be like, wow, this is so different than what, the way it used to be. And, and uh, we, we've adjusted to that and we're managing that and uh, it's going great. So I feel, I feel awesome about where we're gonna be there's no announcements to any of it right now, but because uh, things are, you know, in flux with all with everybody really, when, and so that's new. When you look at it, I mean, you have a guy like Milan who's 24. Yeah. E-man's 23. If you, you know, he would, he would be 24 at the NCAA tournament next right. year. How much different is it for those guys? I mean, we all thought it's huge. We all thought that these guys, every, oh, everybody's going to take advantage of this and come back, but yeah, being 24 in and, college. And, and that's what I told these guys about. A month ago in the season, I said, "Hey, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be here to talk a 24-year-old into uh, coming back for your sixth year of college. It, it, that's if it's best for you, then great. And if it's best to go the other way, then great. But I'm gonna give them the pros and cons and what we can do and how we can, you know, just because you're 24 doesn't mean we can't make you better. And and that's what we're about. And so." We, we weigh out the pros and cons. I'm here to help them. I'm in their corner the rest of their life, and that's what I want them to understand is that this is not like me holding on to their shorts and say, don't leave, you know. I'm going to find what's best for them and, and try to help them with their best decision so they don't make a short-term decision of, you know. I mean, I think I look around this group, and there's probably, I mean, you were seven years in college and you were six and a half, but you guys were asked to leave. So it, uh, it's different. But, you know, when kids start this journey, they don't really have this vision of them playing five or six years in college. I mean, that, that's a long, long journey. And so I think in their mind, they had already, you know, had this mapped out. So it's a, they have to readjust where they are without looking at the short term, try to make the long term decisions that would be best for them. And that's what we're, our staff is here to help them with. So do you know, I mean, I know you're not going to say, but like when you're trying to go out there and know how many scholarships you have and the portal and all that, I mean, are you with Mladen and, and Marcus, those two, do you feel pretty like you have an idea which way those are going? Yeah, I, I do feel like I have ideas and, and, but yeah, and you know, our, you know, one of our maxims is live in truth. So I don't want to be out recruiting someone with the idea of like, I'm promising you this because this guy's leaving the, you know, so the, all that becomes really, really complicated and, you know, but we just trying to, Take it a day at a time and, and help these guys as much as we can help them. And the staff's doing a great job with that. And, and I, our guys believe that and know that. So, you know, it'll, it'll be great for, 
for everybody. I guess what June second is actually the date that like someone like Marcus would have to make a final decision, right, uh, yeah. one way or the other. I mean, do you does that hurt though if you're not sure you can recruit if you do have a spot or not for Maladin or? Yeah, but again, uh, just we're just taking that day at a time and figuring it out as we go. And I think we have a good feel of of where these guys are and and where it's going. When it, when it comes to the transfer portal, is is there? I mean, it's all learning right now, but is there a way to kind of prorate the value that's in there? I mean, you look at if you want a shooting guard, for example, it seems like you, you could probably go in and get one. Mm -hmm. But like an example of a guy like Milan who is 6'10 and will rebound like his life depends on it. Like is sure. it harder to get something like that out of the portal? Y yeah, and it's really hard to evaluate because every, there's, you know, it's really hard to evaluate. Like how do you know if you put RJ Keen at a different school at a lower level, how do you know he's not averaging 15? You know, so you're comparing all these different apples to oranges and, and you're doing it in such a short period of time that even by watching film and getting to know guys, you, you try to do all that, but there's just so many unknowns in the portal that, that it's, it's, it's a, it can be a real challenge. And that's why a lot of mistakes are gonna be made both by the student athletes and the, and the schools uh, because there's such a short window of getting to know each other and, and really figuring out what that individual needs and what that school needs. And we, we've been fortunate in, in the guys that we've been able to get in the, in the portal. And, but it, it seemed to have a longer process at that time when we did it with all those guys that played last year because it all worked out great for those guys. When you, have, when you look at a guy like 12, you know, when he when he started here, he, yeah. he was a walk on, and, right. and you know he went out and earned a scholarship. And I think that he's clearly proven he's a scholarship player. Mm -hmm. But is that somewhere if you get tied on numbers, that that might be something you can can go one way or the other? Well, I don't think he'd like to hear that. <laughs> I, I agree. I just, I, I yeah, just yeah. Want, I mean, yeah. Because there was one no. point in time where you were getting a scholarship player for yeah, almost, for well, not yeah. for you, but for right, me, right. No, no know. doubt for our program, it was a big it was a big plus. It helped us for two years because basically it gave us an extra scholarship for a guy that ended up being a rotation player and a very important part of the team. So yeah, that was a, that was a value, no doubt. But again, there's so much, you know, this, so many moving parts and so much in flux that, that, that you know, those, those conversations. Uh, but yeah, it's like a salary cap now. You know, you're just trying to figure all that out and manage that. And so it's, it's an interesting time and it's a new challenge and, you know, we're navigating it and I think we're, our, our staff's doing a great job of navigating it, and so are our players. Max, Portals, Max, I'm not saying you're not worthy. Of <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not going to like you that. You said awesome in terms of how you feel about this program. So some yeah. fans, you know, maybe they say E-Man put his name in the portal, or they see someone, they're not sure they're coming back, or they, yeah. you know, and then they see all these recruits that list the 20 schools they're talking to, and maybe you guys aren't listed on it. I know yeah. you guys are working behind the scenes, but what would be the, the message to fans, I guess, about building off this momentum and how you well, feel about moving forward? With the history is the best indicator of the future, not the not Twitter. <laughs> yep. That's a pretty good quote right there, Jay. I think. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> you guys can tweet that, ironically. In, in general, ironically, that would be a good tweet. Maybe you just build, I guess, off the yeah. awesome comment in general about the direction of the program. Uh, that was good. Yeah. What? No. Just building off the awesome comment. Just in general, well, I mean, like what we, what we signed today is pretty special. And the thing that, that you know, we're not just out, you know, shooting a shotgun in, in the air and hoping it lands on the, oh, we gotta get this guy, we gotta get this guy because he's coming from a specific program. That doesn't mean he's the right character or the right work ethic or the right team guy. Because you look at what we did this year, it was our chemistry and it was our team. It wasn't, you know, we weren't the collection of the, we did, I mean, if you wanna look at it that way, we didn't have one first team all league guy, supposedly. Now I'll argue that, but you know, but, uh, it was the chemistry and the character and the work ethic and all those things that made the difference. And that's, that's why we're very careful of who we, who we take in this program. And then again, back to Sada, that's why I'm so excited about him. He's a, this is a perfect guy for our program and, and that's what we're gonna protect is the unity of this team and the, you know, and the long-term plan of this program. And that's our, that's our daily battle and it's not just, hey, let's grab the 13 most talented guys we can get because that's not gonna work. You, you, there's a lot of examples of that not working last year for a lot of teams. And I think we were the example of the other way where the value of chemistry, the value of the hard work, the value of the blue collar guys, the value of the guys that bleed blue. And that's what we're getting here.
What do you think coaches, as they look at the, the portal across the country, and players maybe also, you got guys that go into the portal with one year left versus some guys that maybe yeah. think they should be somewhere else and have three years left. So what's the difference when people look at somebody that has like one year left versus like a lot of years left? You know, that it used to be a big difference because you're like, oh, great. Well, we, but nowadays everything's just, you know, with some players and some of it's just transactional. Well, we want to, we want to transform guys here, not just, mm -hmm. hey, come in and we're going to get what we can get out of you and you're going to get what you can get out of us and away we go. And we want lifelong relationships with these guys. We want to be able to impact them, you know. You guys are making me late for a boo right now who just tipped five minutes ago. And, you know, that, that's what our program's about. And that's what this place is about. You look at our football program the same way or you look at all the programs we have in athletics. We, we want to be transformational in these young men's lives. And so, yeah, sometimes it might mean getting a guy like Lexus. He played for us. Now he works here. I mean, that's pretty transformational. And... Uh, that, that's what we're looking for when we're out recruiting is how we can, you know, and that's why I'm so excited about Sada because I know what the future can bring him and what, you know, what our program can help him achieve. When it comes to Sada real quick, you, you bring up, you know, chemistry, character, relationships, the way you treat people, unbreakable culture, all of that. He mentioned to me that, um, okay. that you, uh, when you talk to him, you'd often just joke around with him. I know yeah. It's as simple as that. How, yeah. how much do you think, how, a, how fun is it to, Finally, like, you know, f figure out what, what lands with, with a recruit like him right. and then execute it. Well, and it's got to be, you know, where my personality, our program's personality, we want to enjoy ourselves. We want the gym to be a, a, a good place of, of where we go in there, we're passionate, we're joyful. We, we do our work, but, you know, we enjoy being there every day. And that's what I want those guys to be able to see on a day. You know, what they, you know, the, maybe the difference in our recruiting sometimes and other people's is what you see is what you get. You're not going to, you know, there's a lot of programs out there that will recruit one way and when the kids get there, well, there's a reason why a lot of guys are leaving because that wasn't what was presented. I mean, what we, what we promise is what we deliver on and, and usually a lot more.